I think in Dachau, um, the situation is um, it's, uh, yeah, similar to um, all over the world because also um, our museum um, was closed for the first time in, 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 the, in the history of the memorial site um, from the middle of March uh, till uh, the beginning of May. And uh, since May, the, the memorial site is open. Um, since June, also our museum is open and we uh, can uh, offer uh, guided tours with a small group on the memorial site. Um, but it's still not an easy situation. Um, usually uh, we have a lot of tourists, uh, uh, especially in summer, but this summer it uh, was um, quite empty um, compared to the last years. But we used the time to create a new type of tours. So um, since um, uh, April, we are um, offering um, 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 live tours on our um, Facebook um, page. Um, and um, yeah, we have uh, around um, um, 50 to uh, 100 uh, viewers per, um, per each, um, in, in, in each um, 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 video. And we have good, uh, we had good experiences with that because um, the people or the, the viewers can ask their questions directly um, during the, the tour to the guide. And uh, we offer these tours in uh, mostly in German. Uh, we did a few tours also in, uh, in English and also two tours in Italian. Um, yeah, besides this um, um, Facebook live tours, we um, offer um, now also exclusive tours for school classes since one month. Um, the, the reason is that um, it is now easier for the schools to um, get a view into the memorial site because as you may know, maybe also in German Germany, we will have another uh, lockdown soon. And uh, so the, the schools can uh, ask their questions during this tour uh, live from the classroom to our guides. And I would say that, uh, uh, well, I, I think that uh, the, 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 uh, the booked tours um, uh, for, for school classes increase when we have, if, if there's another lockdown. Uh, on our website, we also offer a kind of a podcast called Dachauer Tonspuren with little audio sequences. We show contributions about historical topics or interviews. So, for example, uh, we, we, had, uh, we have uh, one interview uh, um, there with the head of the memorial site, Gabriela Hammermann. Uh, in this interview, um, she is talking about a new exhibition. Uh, um, the topic of the exhibitions are the Dachau subcamps. And finally, uh, yeah, we are, oh no, and there's another thing. Uh, since September, we offer a virtual tour for the visitors in Dachau with an app that can screen original photos of the liberation to suitable places on the memorial. The so-called liberation app nearly won a prize one week ago. So also this is uh, a very um, um, successful new thing we are doing. And finally, we are trying to do more workshops or online lectures like we are doing it today. And in my eye, I said it's a good chance to uh, meet with uh, colleagues from all around the world, like we are doing it today. And um, yeah, so there are there are also uh, so uh, chances for uh, new ways of of digitalization and doing this uh, crisis. Yeah. So um, now we have uh, twenty six participants, and I will start now with. Um, which only the recording is already on. Okay, yeah, then uh, we start with the uh, first lecture and I say uh, yeah, um, hello to uh, Mofidol Hockwe. Um, and I'm very happy that we uh, that uh, Mofidol Hockwe is joining us today because it is already 8 p.m. in uh, Dhaka in, uh, in the capital of Bangladesh. So it's quite late in the evening. And with Mof 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 Mofidol uh, Hockwe, we have one of the most famous historians of Bangladesh with us today. And yeah, Mofidol Hokwe is one of the founder trustees of the Bangladesh Liberation War Museum. He studied sociology at the University of Dhaka and is an awarded author and social activist of repute. He's involved in promoting justice for genocide and the concept of peace and tolerance in society. Recently, he directed a study to collect testimonies of Rohingya victims of genocide and analyze zoos from international crime perspective. As director of the Center for the Study of Genocide and Justice, he is promoting the cause both nationally and globally. The Liberation War Museum is a non-governmental museum and commemorates the Bangladesh Liberation War that led 
to the independence of Bangladesh from Pakistan. Over the years, the museum collected over 20,000 objects related to the war and accumulated more than 50,000 eyewitness uh, accounts of his history. So um, yeah, this is quite much. And now, Mofidul Hokwe, I think you can go on. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It depends on where you are, but above all, a good day. And it's a great privilege and honor for us to be connected with the Howe Concentration Camp Memorial Site. The history of uh, the suffering of the Jewish people and also other people in Europe, the Holocaust. We know about Holocaust from literature, from film, from art, and the sites of the different concentration camp has made deep impact in everywhere in the world where there are process of memorialization of the past address. So I feel greatly honored and uh, I would like to present to you about the Diversion War Museum, which was established in 1996, 25 years after our independence. And uh, before uh, we go into that, I will uh, have to give you a brief about the background of our diversion work, uh, which uh, Uh, which is which is very important uh, because of the historical setting is uh, is an important part of our memorialization work, and uh, so we can start with uh, the emergence of the end of the British colonial rule after uh, two hundred years of the colonial domination, and uh, uh, if I can minimize it. So I, I think you have to endure with that. Part of it will be covered by the uh, panelists. But anyway, so if I, you see the map of India when British left, the new state of Pakistan was created by uh, on the basis of the two nation theory, which was promoted by the leaders of the Pakistani struggle, that the Muslims and Hindus are two nations and they cannot live together. So it is the legacy of division which has made a deep impact and the two parts were separated by more than 1200 miles, about 2000 kilometers. It's, it seems absurd maybe today, but it become very much possible at that time because of the conflict, the brutal riots that happened in 1946 in Calcutta, which is called Great Calcutta Killing, followed by riots in Noakhali in what uh, is now Bangladesh and also in other parts. So the political leaders as well as colonial rulers decided that you divide India and put the Muslims and Hindus separately and give the homeland to the Muslims. But that is not possible actually to divide a complicated society. And so what happened that Pakistan emerged as a uh, state based on the uh, two nation theory on the theocratic ideology and it was the domination of the western wing over the eastern part and that led to the struggle of the bengali people which culminated in the freedom struggle in 1971 and bangladesh paid a heavy price and it was a nine months war and that was uh, very much uh, projected by the global media by other people and about three million people lost their life, 10 million people had to leave the country and take shelter in India, and about 300,000 women became victims of sexual violence. Almost every family suffered. It was a very, very traumatic and huge tragedy for our people. But also our people fought heroically, and at the end, in December, 16 December 1971, we finally, the Pakistan army surrendered, with 96,000 troops. It was the largest surrender after the Second World War when Bon Paulus army surrendered in the Battle of Stalingrad, And Bangladesh emerged as an 
independent state so but the story of the newly independent bangladesh had a very checkered political life our father of the nation sheikh mujibur rahman returned to bangladesh in january 1972 from pakistani prison but within three and a half years he was brutally murdered along with his family members and the the perpetrators of this atrocity they have taken up the power the military members of the bangladesh army along with the rightist forces the religious fundamentalist group so those who has opposed the liberation war they actually established their control over the nation so from 1971 we own our independence but in 1975 a new era of darkness fallen on our nation and this was in this period from 1975 to 1996 it was a very dark period when perpetrators of genocide became part of the government and bangladesh genocide was denied by the state and also forgotten by the global community if you look into the literature of the 20th century genocide it is very rare that you will find reference of bangladesh genocide after holocaust they will jump to the cambodian genocide or what happened in the former yugoslavia or rwanda and other places but it is very important to uphold the story of the bangladesh genocide and its struggle so we established the museum in 1996 it was a citizen support we found that the government is doing nothing actually to preserve the memory and on the other hand we found that people have a great urge for memorialization for preservation for presentation so we are the eight trustee we made an appeal to the community that we want your support we want to establish a museum we have rented a two story building a colonial era building at the heart of the city and made an appeal that we want to establish a museum and we want your support and we were overwhelmed by the community support and right from the beginning the museum has the artifacts contributed by the people and also the other kind of support they have rendered so we started a new journey since 1996 to 2 march the museum became a central place for memorialization a lot of people came up with lot of artifacts documents memorabilia and our collection started going we are also a very active museum uh, we call our museum a people's uh, initiative it's also it was a private enterprise and there were so many collections from so many people both from home and abroad and also our activities on different events on different occasion and also we try to bring the younger generation into various uh, acts of the museum so the museum's strength is the community support and the community involvement and over the years um, the museum became a kind of cultural space for all kind of renderation we also have the different programs to help children come to the museum and do various kind of work we observe different day including hiroshima day 6th august we observe it in memory of sasaki sadako who became a victim of nuclear uh, reaction 6 years after the atomic fallout and children make actually white strolls to commemorate the sadako and also for peace and we have a annual festival with the students we bring students to the museum and then invite all of them to a large field in, a, in the university to have a half day cultural event and this is actually a great event which young people cherish so much to visit the museum and render their cultural program and the different songs and music so this way the museum is growing and in 1999 we excavated a killing field in the suburb of dhaka which was a abandoned pit house and there was a pump house and the pit was used to kill people and dump it inside the uh pit and we excavated about 69 skulls and lot of bones and then constructed a memorial site over there as this was one of the killing field we related the site with a thousand other killing field all over the country we have the name of the other killing field there and we also have a wall commemorating the genocide of the 20th century starting from armenia and then we have also in the wall we have the 
is to other genocides and also every week the victims or survivors meet with the young students so the site is also very interactive site and in the genocide world we also have the genocide of the of nazi germany 11 million people and we have given the name of the few uh, concentration camps just to relate it with the sites of suffering we have the name of uh, treblinka uh, dahau uh, auschwitz uh, six of the concentration camps over there and i am really very proud today that we are now connected with dahau and we put the name in our world uh, about uh, 20 years ago this is actually the, uh, the white stones are the epitaphs for the killing fields all over the country and the world is depicting the 20th century genocide so this these are the uh, work that we have done and then we also have a traveling museum, a mobile bus, which goes to different sections of the uh, country, especially to the schools. And children are very enthusiastic to see what is inside the bus, the mini museum. We also show them a documentary film. And then, as they are very inspired, we tell them that uh, you uh, have just uh, witnessed a glimpse of history, but the history is around you. In your family also, you will find senior members who were the eyewitness of 1971 atrocities. And you can choose one of them and listen to them and then write it down and send it to us through your teacher. We have a network of teachers and then students are collecting this testimony. And we have about 50,000 plus oral statements collected by the students. This is a rich treasure that we think that can be used in many different ways. So we understood what is the uh, power of memory. And I think we all are engaged in this. And we, we find that individual memory becomes collective by the museum initiative. And memorialization can raise questions not only about what happened in the past, how it happened, but also why it happened. And memory keeps the issue of justice alive, justice for genocide alive and burning. So the new challenge for us was to build a permanent museum. Because as we have grown, we have got the support, we have got many different artifacts and documents, but it is very important to preserve the building that we started with was not fit to be a museum. So this was our dream and uh, we need land and we actually finally we could find the opportunity to make our dream a reality. We got a piece of land from the government and we paid for that land government at the governmental rate, which is much lower than the commercial rate. And then we organized the architectural competition and we made appeal to the people for support and fund. And we could start the work in 2010. And then another important thing happened in 2008 that after long, long years, the party supported by the electoral verdict came to power who, who actually uh, promised to deliver justice for the past crimes. And the International Crimes Tribunal was established in 2010 and they one by one they have delivered verdict for genocidal crime for the local collaborators and these are many of the local collaborators uh, about 32 cases have so far been adjudicated and one of the collaborators when he got the life sentence he showed victory sign because he was sure that one day things will change they will reverse the whole scenario and they will come out of the prison and that actually uh, agitated the younger people so much. And they came out on the street in thousands. And that was a great protest, social protest movement in Bangladesh made by the younger people, raised the voice for justice by the youth of the nation. So it shows that the genocidal experience has become a bit intergenerational in Bangladesh through various way of memorialization and museum also playing its role. And we could finally build the permanent museum in 2017, the doors were opened for the museum. It was beyond our dream, but this is a dream fulfilled. Now we have a lot of facilities and support system to do many kinds of work, and we continue to do what we are doing. We have organized different international conferences on Bangladesh genocide. This is one conference we did in the new museum with Professor Adam Jones coming from Canada and other members of the International Association of Genocide Scholars, they also joined and we try to link us with the other killing fields, other sites of atrocity, and we offer students a certificate course to raise the 
youth researchers and activists. And we also organize a winter school, a residential school for the youth, which is very popular. And we also invite youth from Nepal, Cambodia, Timur Leste, also to take part in this uh, winter school on genocide and justice. So these are the activities we are doing. Different personalities also visit our museum. This is Adam Adian, Professor Katharina Hoffman from Oldenburg University. She also invited a youth group to go to the German site. So we are trying to establish contact with them in so many ways we make it see the possibility. And in August 2017, the Rohingya crisis erupted. Now it's a global crisis and about 1 million refugees actually took shelter in Bangladesh. We were victim of genocide in 1971. And now our nation is playing host to the victims of genocide of 2017. And we found that uh, the youths were engaged with the museum, that they were studying genocide from a theoretical perspective, but the, now the victims are in our land. So we sent them to the camps to meet, to discuss with the victims, to meet them, to know about their story and collect their testimony. So this was a very moving experience for the youths to be with the victims. And they also connect our 1971 electricity with the 2017 Rohingya crisis. And at the end, we came up with a report on the Rohingya genocide. And so this was the long journey we made from 1996 to 2020. But in March 2020, it was a great crisis for all of us when the corona COVID-19 pandemic broke out. Our museum was also closed since mid-March as government declared lockdown and all the educational institutions were closed. National Museum and other museums were closed. We are really confused. We are working on physical space. We were trying to work, do as much as possible. And initially, it was a shocking experience and we are also closed and looking for a way, way out. And there was a different uh, webinar and conference that happening at that time. And in one of the webinar in IC Memo, where we, I joined, there was participants from Lagos, also the Anna Frank Museum from Netherlands. They're all closed. But from uh, museum in Slovenia, Kaya Sirov said, our doors are closed, but we are trying to open our windows. And she explained what they are doing for education, for reaching the museum to uh, outside. And this was an eye opener for us. So we also decided that let's uh, let's work uh, for uh, uh, bringing our museum to our supporters, our patron. Uh, and then we organized a webinar on 30th April. We started organizing different webinars. On 18th May, we made a uh, video presentation on World Museum Day, respecting diversity. So we made a video of different culture groups in the country. We did uh, continue of continuing to do such work. And I think today's meeting is also very, very animating for us. And we did online workshop on filmmaking by the youth, also one minute film workshop for the network teachers. Uh, and one uh, event that we have planned to hold in April was in, uh, the eighth Liberation Dog Fest. We are doing every year documentary film festival but that was closed because of the corona pandemic. Then we found that we can go online and we are supported by the technical teams. And then on 15th to 20th June, we did this eighth liberation dog fest with 82 films from 50 countries. It was all online, but it has given us the greatest strength that if we can do it, then it means that the whole world is open before us. So we are greatly inspired by what can be done online. So we opted for online exhibition. And also this year, we observed the Hiroshima Day with online presentation and asked the young students that you can make the store, white stores at your home. So they have participated in this way. And we did uh, uh, another exhibition with the Rohingya victims making quilts. So we did a thread exhibition in collaboration with the student group of Harvard University. And this is also an interactive exhibition. We produced a film on a Rohingya victim who played mandolin in the camp. And this was premiered on 27th August 2020, on the same day, three years ago, that atrocity erupted. So in so many ways, we are trying to make ours meaningful 
We did three online exhibition on Father of the Nation, Bangabandhu Sheikh Sajib, whose birth centenary was this year, and we could not do many events, but we did three online exhibitions. There were three lectures, public lectures also on Sheikh Sajib. And this is the way we are continuing our work. We are trying to reestablish contact with the network teachers. We have organized two online meeting, and now we think that we can actually go online in video with teachers from various parts. We are offering the certificate course online. We have planned to do the winter school also online. So this has uh, given us the hope for the future and the new project that we want to have, how to reactivate the teachers network with new methods and new tools. And we want to commemorate very strongly the 50th anniversary of Bangladesh genocide, which is 2021. So we want to be connected with other sites and see that how meaningfully we can do this, even in this difficult time, to be with the global sites and global scholars. And we are trying to organize traveling exhibition in Korea, Cambodia, and Vietnam, with whom we have the partnership. And we are also now doing a, a virtual tour of the museum, which will be ready by the end of November. So these are the things that we are planning and uh, we found that uh, we can create hope for the future with the power of digitalization, digital platform and presentation. And we need to travel on this road to exploit and explore the new technology to foster memory and education. And here we want to learn from other experiences, your experiences. And also we need to establish effective virtual connectivity with memorial sites and museums around the world to gain new experience and strength and present our story to others. So this is in short, our presentation, our journey, and we highly appreciate this opportunity to present ourselves before all of you connecting with the Daho concentration camp site, the site very dear and very cherished the memory so much. Thank you all. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Mufidul Hokwe, um, for this big presentation and, and this uh, fast run through the history of uh, Bangladesh and the history of your memorial site. Um, can you maybe stop your um, screen sharing? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And um, yeah, I think there are a few questions. I, I would also have a few, but um, because uh, Noro Gatera is not uh, joining us today, um, I think we can use the time to start now another another presentation um, before we go to the questions. Um, Yaron, um, I think for you it's better when you start quarter past four because uh, some people are joining later on, yeah? So shall I begin uh, my presentation now? Uh, oh, it's up to you. I mean, we can also um, do now the presentation from, from Virginia. Um, because you, you said to me in the beginning that some um, um, colleagues from you are joining at quarter past four, so. Okay, so give me just uh, a minute or so. Yeah, Thank otherwise you. we can otherwise we can also do uh, another presentation of Virginia. So maybe start another presentation. Yes. And I'll be I'll be next no, if possible. No, no, no problem. Then you, then we will make your presentation after the break. Thank um, you very much. Yeah, Virginia and Marie, could you start now? Is it yeah. possible? Yeah, no problem. Thank you very much, Mofidul, for your presentation. It was really interesting. And I've got also many questions, but maybe after. Uh, so we will present you the Maison Dizio. So we made a PowerPoint, but uh, uh, it will only, uh, this. Uh, the aim of this PowerPoint is only to present you uh, the Maison Dizio, just to show you pictures of the Maison des Yeux and our exhibition, and I will speak also to, um, to explain to you. So this is the PowerPoint. Can you see it? Yes. OK. So um, OK. So this is the this is a picture of uh, the Maison des Yeux. So um, so originally, the Maison des Yeux, so I will, this is their house. So uh, originally, the Maison des Yeux was the place that welcomed more than 100 Jewish children from mid-May 1943 
until the 6th of April 1944, in order to protect them from persecutions of both French and German governments. On the 6th of April 1944, 44 children and seven adults were rounded up and deported in Auschwitz-Birkenau in Poland and Tallinn, which was formerly known as Roval in Estonia. Only one of them, uh, Lea Feldblum, a young woman, came back from Auschwitz. So the Maison d'Isieu was um, uh, opened in uh, 1994, and uh, it's a place of uh, remembrance, education, and life in order to understand the crime against humanity. So this is a picture, in la you are in the house now. So I just show you the house. So it's a pod. The house is a pot of uh, memorial. So the Maison d'Isieux, it's uh, the, the real name is uh, Maison d'Isieux Memorial to the Exterminated Jewish Children. It's a place of remembrance, education and life in order to understand crime against humanity and to act against all forms of, of discrimination. We are located, we are located in the countryside, uh, one hour from you. And uh, the Maison d'Isieux is a place that makes a complex contemporary history accessible to everyone. So the exhibition, the permanent exhibition is divided in uh, three parts. So here on the screen, uh, you've got uh, the part dedicated to the Shoah in France, the, the Holocaust or Shoah uh, in France during uh, World War II. And then you've got the birth. So in the second part, you've got justice uh, from the birth of an international justice and its um, continued presence to this day. And, and also um, the creation of remembrance of crime against humanity. And we are also speaking about uh, apartheid in South Africa, uh, the torture and enforced uh, disappearance in Latin America or the Tutsi genocide in uh, Rwanda. And today the Maison des Yeux, um, is um, and, and also, sorry, the third part, so the memory part, uh, is uh, dedicated to understand the building of remembrance in France, Italy, and Germany with a focus on the building of the Maison d'Isieux uh, remembrance. And today, so the Maison d'Isieux is a place that aims to deliver by remembering the children and adults from the Maison d'Isieux a universal message and to act against all forms of, or, uh, of uh, intolerance and uh, racism. And Marie and I, we are both working on the educational and research board. So now Marie will present the, the project. Uh, how did we deal with the COVID-19 and what did we, how did we act um, for, uh, to continue the, um, I don't know, to continue the, the to continue to work at La Maison d'Isieux. So she will present the, the website. Um, so just um, to know that uh, we have every year um, uh, about uh, 30,000 um, uh, visitors and uh, included uh, 15,000 students. Uh, so we have uh, a lot of schools uh, to um, uh, which come here uh, in Isieux. Um, and uh, with school, we uh, usually have uh, so, um, a visit of uh, the, how, the, the house and the exhibition, and uh, then the afternoon, uh, a workshop. Uh, but uh, uh, we don't have um, really digital workshops. So uh, when uh, the lockdown uh, happened uh, in March. We were closed uh, so from March to um, May. Uh, and uh, so the schools were also closed. And the teachers um, uh, had to prepare uh, digital lessons to uh, their students. And uh, for ECU, uh, we don't have digital workshop, but we have a useful uh, website uh, that 
You can see, can you see it? Yes. Uh, no. No, okay. You only see the uh, PowerPoint presentation. Ah, okay. So maybe I have. Uh, okay. Maybe you should start the screen sharing again and then uh, go to the website. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Okay. So on the website, um, uh, the website um, includes um, a lot of uh, scientific contents and um, historical contents. Uh, for uh, all visitors uh, uh, to understand what Maison des Yeux is, what we are, and also for the teacher to prepare uh, uh, the, their visit with you or um, during the COVID crisis to prepare a lesson um, uh, uh, with the issue and uh, on a lesson on the topics the Maison des Yeux is dealing with. So you have the uh, three parts of the exhibition and for every part, you have okay. Uh, so uh, historical contents, but also archives uh, that they can use to um, with uh, their with their students. Okay, so you have uh, photos of, and uh, there is also um, a section uh, named documentary resource. Okay, where a teacher uh, can uh, download some uh, archives, uh, for example, um, here you have a, I don't know if you, uh, hope you can see it. It's, uh, they can uh, uh, an, an internet problem, it's working very slowly, so, so sorry. Uh, okay, they can download uh, the photos, drawings, of uh, the, the children or um, uh, other uh, documents. And there is also um, a video section. Okay. Well, um, there, there, is, uh, there are uh, so trial archives. Uh, because we have uh, this part of, uh, with, uh, um, uh, which deals with uh, justice. So we have uh, videos of uh, the November trial and the Klaus Barbie trial uh, that they can watch uh, online. Uh, there is also um, uh, testimonials of former uh, children of uh, the house because uh, 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 there is also children that um, survived uh, the, the Second World War. So uh, we have some testimonials on our website. Uh, where they speak about the, the life in, in this house. Yeah. Mother. Yeah. Mother. Okay. And uh, for teacher, there is also um, lectures and um, seminars uh, that we put uh, online, um, uh, seminars that uh, Maison des Yeux uh, organized uh, by the past. 
And then um, the last thing with the website, because um, we had also another problem. Uh, we have an easier, uh, different commemoration during the, uh, the year. And uh, the first, the, the most uh, important for us is um, the commemoration of the 6th uh, of uh, April, because it's the date uh, the children were arrested. And uh, this year, so uh, uh, there was the, this lockdown and uh, no, no one could come here immediately to commemorate the children. So we uh, made um, an online event and uh, we uh, made uh, this video. Because um, usually when we have a commemoration, there is someone, uh, mostly st uh, students, uh, who read uh, the name of uh, um, the, the children uh, who were arrested here. So this year we made this video with uh, drawings of uh, the children and uh, the name and where they were born uh, and uh, deported. And this video was um, seen by more than uh, 150,000 people and shared uh, 1,200 times, which is a lot uh, uh, for us. <laughs> okay, yeah. you speak about. Uh, and now I will speak um, so to, to finish the presentation. I will speak about uh, the conferences. So we have a conference with uh, the Hall Memorial today. And also we've got, um, we've got a partnership since five years with the Yad Vashem. So, uh, and uh, formerly it was um, a teacher tra teacher's training so it was um, in Yad Vashem or in La Maison Dizieux. And we are hoping we will be able to maintain this summer session that we don't know because of the lockdown. And due to COVID, we decided uh, to set up conference session with uh, our Yad Vashem partners uh, for teachers all over the world. So the conferences will be, held in, uh, will be held sorry, in French, uh, Italian, Spanish and English about the different topics uh, we develop at La Maison Visio. So uh, Holocaust, crime against humanity, justice and remembrance. And for example, here are some examples of the um, a conference we will uh, held. So Sabine and Miros Lata, so the, the two directors of the Maison Visio, a life of commitments, uh, Klaus Barbie's Telex, a proof of crime against humanity, uh, the trail of Klaus Barbie and the building of the Maison Vizier memory. Uh, the first commemoration of the Easy Roundup on, on the 7th of April 1946. And the role of the witness, the judge and the historian. So, uh, and we also uh, sat up, so last uh, week, uh, conferences with the uh, Anne Frank's uh, memorial in France. Voilà. <laughs> So that's it for us. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, uh, okay, first, first I, I have to apologize because I forgot to introduce you in the beginning. <laughs> Sorry for this, but yeah, thank you for this amazing presentation as well, um, especially also for the video and your work. Uh, so uh, yeah, both of you, Virginia and Marie, and also Mofidul, you're doing uh, inspiring, great work. Um, yeah, thanks for both presentations. And I think now we have 10 to 15 minutes. 
to ask uh, questions and go into a little discussion. And I see there is uh, already one question from uh, from Tisa Bowman. Um, and it's a question to uh, Mofido uh, Hokwe, I think. Um, she's, she writes, um, thank you for your uh, presentation. Are you offering any online activities aimed for at students? And I am really impressed by your analog community engagement and would be interested to see how this can be done in online environment as well. So, Mofido, uh, Okay. Uh, thank you for the uh, interest shown in our work and also the interesting question. Uh, we, as I have explained, that we are now shifting to online. We were really in an analog scenario and also uh, inspiring the students to collect testimonies and then when they send the testimony, we send them a letter of thanks, personal letter of thanks. We also tell them that all these testimonies will be preserved in the museum because it was handwritten. And if they come after 10 years, 15 years, they can, can show it to them. And also we publish uh, from time to time some anthology with the testimonies. But we do not say that these are the best testimonies because we think that each of them is very important but because each of them is a human experience. But now we have lost this connectivity and it is very painful for us. And we are thinking that how we can revive that. And in our teachers network conference, they have come up with some ideas. And now we cannot make a general appeal, but we think we have to be very focused area wise, reason wise, and then come up with what they have given to us and what more they can give. And the teachers will be the vehicle to deliver this. So we are planning and we are thinking and we are trying to redesign the activity. And the teachers also came up with the idea because, because of the online education now, they have the link with all the students. So they can be a good vehicle and good media for us to reach to the students. But how to reach out to the students, what to ask from them, what to, they should uh, contribute in what way. I think this, that's a big challenge. And what Virginia has shown about the, how they observe the 4th of April in a new way, with the, I think then we are now exploring various options. We also have a good uh, connection with the Anna Frank House Museum, and they have given us previously the traveling exhibition. Now we are thinking that we can, if we can connect that exhibition with how the girls of the same age now in confined in their home. And that confinement is very different, but there are some similarities into this experience and how they can relate with that. So we are exploring various options and we are open to new ideas, new concepts and want to learn from others. And especially next year is the 50th anniversary of our independence of our genocide. So the new generation, we thinking of making a one minute film also we inspired them to do one minute film and we try to train the teachers with the technique of doing one minute film with a smartphone. Now, one advantage is that uh, smartphone is not that widely available, but the students have access to a smartphone or to computers and the network is all over the country. So we think that we have great potentiality, but how to exploit that, we are really looking for ideas and concepts and experience from and learning from others. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, you. You also talked about this um, commemoration next year. And um, in Dachau, uh, we had a big problem this year in, in April because of our commemoration. We couldn't uh, make us make the commemoration uh, as we planned it. And maybe it's also not possible in the next year. Um, do you also think about the new, new ways for this commemoration, maybe to make it online? Um, and then do you have still survivors um, who are maybe coming to your memorial site for such a day? Uh, uh, um, the survivors would... Uh, no, no, it was a question for, for Mufudil Hokwe. Ah, sorry, sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, 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 it's okay. Sorry. Yeah, uh, we have we a have lot of survivors, actually, those who are coming. We have also uh, a list of the freedom fighters. Uh, they are also coming to our museum. So. We are thinking that, but this commemoration, we think that globally we, we want to do it digitally. 
to get connected with various sites. As uh, I was listening to the experience of Mr. Dutch, that uh, Klaus Barbie, he was one of the criminal, criminal accused for crimes against humanity. And he was caught many, many years later on. And his, uh, his confinement and trial was also a great inspiration for us because we are also waiting for justice for long, long years. But that justice was ultimately done and delivered. So there are so many ways this commemoration can be made. And uh, with France, we have a connection also with uh, uh, Bernard Ari Levy, BHL. Uh, he was a young student at that time, and he came to Bangladesh and joined the Liberation War inspired by Anthony Malo's call for uh, international solidarity. And he made a visit just this March. And one of the last day in Dhaka, he visited our museum, also met our prime minister. And we took him to the villages where he were in 1971. So there are a lot of actually in global connectivity also. And 1971 struggle was very much supported by people from many countries. So we think that in the commemoration, if we can get meaningfully connected with other sites and uh, activists. We are looking for this opportunity and we will certainly, for our trial also, the crimes against humanity and the genocide, it was a long wait. Then we have engaged the younger generation also to be involved with the tribunal. We have many kind of uh, activities centering around the, our trial, but this trial is also very much connected with the Nuremberg Tribunal and the other efforts. Uh, ICC, ICJ, and for our case, it was a dark era. There was no global support, but domestically, we have organized this uh, uh, International Crimes Tribunal Act, which was enacted by the parliament in 1973, and justice was delivered in from 2010. But we still have Pakistani perpetrators out of our reach. So we are thinking maybe we can do some kind of people's tribunal or bring the experience of the other countries where what they do when the perpetrators are cannot be brought to justice. So I think uh, Bangladesh experience is uh, unique, but it is also a part of the global experience. And we look forward for commemoration in a meaningful way, building bridges and connectivity with other sites. And I am very much inspired by this uh, webinar. And I think this will also give us new idea and get us connected with other people, yeah. other places, and other history. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much for this uh, long answer. And uh, yeah, um, uh, Virginia and um, and uh, and uh, Marie, um, you you mentioned uh, Klaus Barbie and the Nuremberg trials. Mm -hmm. um, do you also have some sort of German groups or German tourists uh, who are coming right. there? Because that could be also a, a good topic for them. Or is it, also, or is it um, especially uh, a memorial site for, for, for school groups? No, no, we've got, um, it's a memorial for uh, everyone. So we have got more than uh, 15,000 uh, students, but also um, it, um, included in the 30,000 uh, people who visit the, the memorial uh, every year. And we've got a lot of uh, German people. And we've got for the tour, uh, every year we've got an ISF, maybe you know, ISF volunteer mm -hmm. each yep. year la, uh, in the La Maison Dizieux. And uh, so uh, he's in charge of uh, round the, um, of the guided tours in, uh, in German. And we've got also audio guides in uh, French, uh, um, French, English, uh, German, uh, Spanish, and Italian. Mm -hmm. So, uh, hmm. So, and we've got a lot of uh, German visitors, but mostly is by the by summer. Yeah, uh, and um, um, yeah, the, the the your commemoration uh, was in in March, right? March is here. April, on the sixth of April, April mm -hmm. the the, um, the day of the roundup. Mm -hmm. Okay, so next year it also will be a, a problem to make it like it was in the last years, yeah, okay. probably. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, we, we, we don't know. <laughs> yeah. No, but yes, we, we have to, to reflect. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the video you, you showed, um, this was created um, after this, uh, after the, the, the crisis began, yeah? Yeah, okay. yes. Yeah, it was amazing, yeah. Like, uh, as uh, Maggie said, 
every year it's a very important moment because every year it's not the, um, the team of the Maison du Dieu who held the ceremony, but it's schools who selected. And uh, um, children from the school, they are naming the children one by one. Mm -hmm. And it's the most important part of the, the ceremony. And we decided to create, it's our, um, uh, it's, uh, the, the team decided to create this video uh, in order to, uh, to have, if, if, we, if we have to, if we have to have just one uh, moment of the commemoration, it's the lecture, uh, it's the, the names. Mm -hmm. So for, for, for us, it's the most important uh, to have all the names here. Yeah. And then in, in uh, which age are the students coming to you memorial site? And because in Dachau, we always have a discussion about the age of the students. And usually they come uh, in an age of, of 14 or 15. Um, is there is it possible also for for children to to yes. visit you? Yeah. Yes. Do we have a special program? Yes. Yes, yes. we have a, a workshop and visits for every year. We have, mm -hmm. but we have also a, a primary school, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we have also uh, students uh, uh, who are going to the university. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, yes. okay. low schools. Who are going to Niger for training, and we've got a policeman school also. Oh, okay. So we've got uh, from uh, from eight, eight, nine years old until uh, policemen no, or uh, lawyers <laughs> or. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, this is quite good to do uh, also to do something with the police police because in Dachau uh, um, we don't have a, a program for for police groups. Mm -hmm. We are working on it, but uh, not not yet. We have something. Uh, Mofidul uh, Hokri, how, how is it in, in, in your memorial site? Um, do you also have um, um, groups with, with maybe young people or, or children? Or, or are, they, are they in an age of, of uh, 13 onwards? Also, oh, um, well, maybe he's. Okay. Uh, yeah, now we can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it is. Uh... Post primary, we call it that is after standard five, which is 13 plus, because the history has many traumatic uh, part, and uh, so we think that maybe. Uh, but we are now there is a strong demand to reach out to the primary students because in the curriculum also they have some reflection of the revolution war, and maybe we can tie it with their curriculum. But mostly we address uh, post primary level students. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Are there more questions um, from the audience? Mm, not yet. I have maybe one to to Mofilde Hockwe. Um, you mentioned this uh, uh, dog festival. Um, since when are you doing it? Um, this is the eighth year, but yes. we there, there was gaps actually. It is now uh, we started in a small way in our old museum. Mm -hmm. uh, but there were uh, in, in 2010, 12, there were some gaps. Yeah. Uh, then now we are continuing it every year, and we are also have the pitching of the young uh, aspirant filmmakers. Mm -hmm. They pitch their concept. There are uh, mentors who go through the exercise. Then we choose one or two films where we try to give our support. Mm -hmm. And the Rohingya film also came up because uh, out of the last year's festival. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, this time we are also looking for more documentary if we can produce for the 50th anniversary. Okay. So we have a we have a collection of documentary films also produced by our museum, also by other young our uh, as documentary directors. Okay, very good, very interesting. Yeah, and there's another uh, question uh, to you, Mufidor Hokwe. Um, Stefan Burger writes: um, Are you supported well by your government? Well, uh, we are supported, now we are supported well by our government. And uh, when we built up the new museum, it was a huge project about uh, uh, 17 million US dollars. And we made it a point that the government support and the people support should be at the same level or more or less 
and it was actually the government support was 55 percent and people's contribution was 45 percent so we were happy with that and we are now actually going to form the endowment fund so that we do not want to be very much dependent on the government now the uh, the staff salary and the recurring expenses are taken care of by the government. That's why we are surviving actually in this very difficult scenario. I know it's a very problem with the European museums and other places, but we are surviving. But for our program, we raise our fund. So that's a good situation so far, and we are happy with that. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. Um, so. Um... There are no more questions yet, maybe after the break. Um, I would say um, we make now a break of, of 10 minutes. And at quarter past, um, also, first of all, thank you very much, um, Virginia, Marie, and Mofidel Hockway. Great presentations. And thanks also for the uh, questions. And yeah, at quarter past four in German time, uh, so in 10 minutes, we meet again. And then uh, there is uh, the next presentation of uh, Jaron. Yeah. Okay, thank so you. See you in 10 minutes, yeah? Yes, perfect. Thank you very much. So it's already quarter past four. So um, good afternoon to. Uh, Jaron Zur, um, and now we are starting with the second, uh, with the third lecture. Um, Jaron Zur works as the pedagogic director at the Ghetto Fighters House Museum in Israel, and the museum was founded in 1949 by survivors of the Holocaust. And from its earliest days, the founders of this museum sought to tell the story of the Holocaust, focusing on the Jewish and universal human spirit in its many shades the possibility of choice even in difficult situations, the victory of the human spirit, and the rebuilding of life later on in the state of Israel. The museum aims to create a dialogue with the visitors regarding their personal meanings of the Holocaust. This is the basis of the educational uh, regime, which seeks to emphasize three fundamental elements. Understanding the Holocaust remembrance, seeing the past as a warning and a source of inspiration for creating a more moral and human society. And with this amazing words, I hand over to Jaron. So Jaron. Okay, yeah, now you can hear me. Uh, so I'd like to say that it's a privilege and an honor to be here with you. Uh, I'm kind of excited. And uh, during the next uh, 15 minutes, I'll try to uh, talk a little bit about who we are uh, after this great introduction by Maximilian. Uh, if possible, I would like to ask, again, only if possible, if you can open your cameras so I could see you on the other side, I think it would be great. Because here's the thing, and later on, I'll speak a little bit about that, trying to create a good educational dialogue during the time of COVID-19. Uh, I think that sometimes it's easy to forget that on the other side of the Zoom, there are people. <laughs> and when we close our cameras, you vanish into thin air. And uh, then I'm just uh, a lecturer speaking uh, to air. <laughs> so uh, that's one of the things we try to do uh, with our uh, educational process, both before COVID-19 and during the last uh, seven months. So right now you're seeing uh, a little bit of our campus, uh, the main museum uh, on the left side, Yad Layelet, the children museum on the right, uh, the wonderful uh, equiduct, uh, not Rome, but uh, from Turkish times, and uh, our amphitheater, which every year uh, we have almost 10,000 visitors on uh, the Holocaust Day, which uh, most of the time is in April in Israel. 
And uh, since uh, COVID-19, of course, we don't have those 10,000 visitors on uh, the Holocaust Day. Uh, we've created uh, an, al an alternative uh, to that with uh, the help uh, of uh, Zoom and the television and the internet in Israel and other places. And last uh, time we had more than 200,000 uh, online visitors uh, during that uh, during that evening. So let's uh, continue. I won't speak about this because Maximilian already talked about took about it. I just want to say a few words about our educational goals: Holocaust remembrance, a warning from the past, and inspiration towards a better future. I'd like to say a few words about it. Uh, all of us that deal with the Holocaust know that this is actually the last decade uh, where we live together with Holocaust survivors. Uh, sadly, uh, I'm sure that in 2030, there won't be Holocaust survivors uh, no more. And to us, it creates a huge dilemma about what is Holocaust memory in this specific time in history where we need to start uh, telling the story without the witnesses. And what does that mean in terms of the younger generation? And how we, can we create a good educational environment that will invite them to take part in that memory and they feel that it's part of their responsibility to remember. And it will become more difficult uh, as time goes by. A warning from the past, we uh, seek to, to understand the Holocaust as something that happened on this planet by ordinary people, ordinary men who were scholars, had university degrees, and were part of a human civilization, and they did this. And we try to understand with our young visitors how could human beings uh, get to a point where they dehumanize other human beings and lead to that specific genocide? I'd like to say that in terms of our visitors, this is a very difficult uh, aspect of Holocaust education because most of them would like to see the perpetrators as something very unique, uh, pathological, different and not like themselves. And to us, this is uh, something very uh, interesting and uh, something, uh, again, not easy uh, to speak about, especially young people that in a year or two years from now uh, will be in the army, for example. Inspiration towards a better future. Uh, our friend from Amsterdam said, it is better to teach the good than to condemn the bad, uh, Spinoza. And to us, uh, we understand there's a paradox in Holocaust education because you want to teach uh, about a better society by evil. But that's a paradox in education because you need to inspire also to good and to goodness and to humanity. So how do you do that during that dark stage in history where it's almost disappeared, uh, humanity? And to us, uh, the museum tells a very unique story, first of all, about uh, the people who created this, this museum, who took part in the uprising in Warsaw, in the ghetto Warsaw in 1943. Not all of them, but some of them, some of them partisans. Some of them saved by, uh, by the righteous among nations. And we want at the end of the visit that um, our young visitors will also think that, yes, humanity went to a very, very, very bad place, but there was also choice. People made choices during that period, and I can make choices today. And human beings, that what they, that's what they do. They choose between good and bad, between activism and pacifism, and so on. So that's something that for us, it's very important that we want to speak uh, with the, the visitors. 
And the way we do it in terms of pedagogical principles is first of all, to create a learning process based on questions and raising dilemmas. You know that with our uh, team, uh, it, we really try, we don't always succeed, but we really try that they won't be lecturers. That's, that's what I did before, you know, when we started this Zoom. I don't want to lecture, I want to try to create a dialogue. I want to see the people that I'm talking with. I want to hear what they have to say about this. I don't want this to be another history lesson. I want this to be relevant to their lives. And in order for this to be relevant, they need to be active in the learning process. So they can't be passive during the day and at least we try that they won't. Uh, by the way, sometimes it's difficult not only with the students, but also with the guys, because sometimes guides want to be the center of, uh, of interest. So this is a very interesting dialogue we have in the museum, especially in days where our guides are starting to guide uh, with Zoom, which also creates uh, many uh, possibilities and difficulties at the same time. Uh, the museum space is a unique environment of education, meaning that everyone that works here in a museum knows that, that we don't want to create another history lesson from high school. We want this to be something different in terms of experience, something that they can only achieve uh, when they come to uh, our museum or any museum for that matter. And active learning as a basis for the educational, educational process, I talked about it uh, just before. So I want to show you two uh, short examples of, uh, from two um, exhibitions that we created during the last uh, three years. Uh, the first, uh, I don't remember the order, so uh, I'll so we'll see soon, we'll see soon. Um, uh, uh, Warsaw, uh, a story of the human spirit. It, it's an exhibition that takes our visitors to three stages, to the lives of the Jews of the city of Warsaw, before the war, between two world wars, in the, break, in the breakout of World War II and during the years of the Warsaw Ghetto, 1940 till 1943. And uh, so that's one uh, exhibition. And the second exhibition, Facing the Glass Booth, it deals with the Eichmann trial, uh, which the Glass Booth, uh, till this day, the original one is in our museum. And uh, students always ask, yeah, that, that's that, that that's, that's the original. Uh, so we'll, uh, uh, we won't see it, but it's there. Uh, so I want to show you two examples of how we try to deal uh, with what I spoke about before in terms of relevance, in terms of engaging. So uh, just a second, I want to see what we'll start with. Okay, so facing the glass booth, immediately we get uh, Hannah Arendt. And uh, it takes us to uh, the, the, the trial from four different point of views of reporters uh, that were in, uh, that were, uh, in the trial. Uh, Hannah Arendt, everybody knows her. Then uh, from the New Yorker, uh, Chaim Guri, an Israeli poet, uh, Uri Avneri, an Israeli journalist, and Harry Mulish, a journalist from Holland. And each one of them, looking at the glass booth, looking at Eichmann, saw something different. And what they saw, and to, uh, to that matter, creates I, sometimes a wonderful dialogue between us and the students. Because when looking at the glass booth, many of them saw a monster, and many of them saw just an ordinary person. And that argument during 1961, 1962, uh, creates a stage for us to create a relevant uh, dialogue uh, for them now. And in order to try a little bit to engage you, maybe if it's possible for you uh, during uh, the short uh, film, which is on our floor in the exhibition, uh, maybe to find or seek one sentence, one quote that got you, you know, something that's, uh, okay, that's interesting, or I agree, or I disagree, okay? 
So let's begin. Uh, I'll just say uh, one more thing. It, it's in Hebrew, but there are subtitles. Okay. שמדובר <laughs> לעולם אינו מסתכל אל הקהל. לי הוא נראה בן אדם רגיל. סתם בן אדם. כמו הוא מהדואר. מהבנק. אזרח פשוט. אזרח שומר חוק. תעשיית המוות, כמו כל תעשייה אחרת, זקוקה בעיקר לבני אדם רגילים השומרים על החוק. שטויות. בן אדם רגיל לא הופך להיות סתם כך רוצח המוני. זה יכול לקרות בכל מקום. זה לא חייב להופיע באותה צורה. זה יכול להופיע בצורה חדשה. כאן זה לא יכול לקרות. זה יכול לקרות בכל מקום. אוקיי, אז בואו נפתח את הצ'אט לפני רגע, אוקיי? ונראה מה יש לנו. או יכול לראות, רק רגע. Uh, Maximilian, I can't see the chat at the moment. Uh, did anybody write something into the chat? Uh, yes, 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 it's working, yeah. Okay, so uh, maybe, maybe you so want, can you maybe, give me a hand? Yeah, maybe maybe it's a good idea to, to um, give us one minute and that everyone can write something. And okay, okay, of course, can, can of course. Yeah. I hear a lot of clicking. <laughs> it's, That's it's, good. It's <laughs> no, no, I liked it, Maximilian. It, that was great. Okay. Inspiring. <laughs> Okay, shall we? One second. You're the best student. Okay, yeah, there are a few um, well, let's hear reactions. It. Yeah, so you cannot see it, yeah? Yeah, I don't know why. Maybe because uh, I'm sharing the screen and I'm looking at uh, the gallery view. Okay, but at the matter, I, I can read it. Um, okay, the first sentence by Patricia. Uh, I can, it can happen everywhere, yes. It can uh, happen everywhere. Yeah, I would agree. It happens, so it also can happen uh, anywhere. 
Um, then Barbara wrote, okay, sorry, it was nearly impossible to read. Yeah, in the, in the end, it was not... Um, um, I'm sorry about that, if it was impossible. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Hopefully, but it's some of you could read. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Anja Schuller, Schuller also is writing, it can happen anywhere. Um, and Velvet Bronze is writing, that's the quote that captured it for me as well. It could happen anywhere, okay. Um, Thies Baumann is writing, a law, a bidding citizen. And Magdalena Geier is writing, just a man, yeah. Just a man. Yeah, then again, a law, abiding citizen. Um, Stefan Boger is writing, uh, like your approach, Aaron, to initiate a dialogue instead of oh, it's okay online. Oh, no, okay, no, it's not not about okay. that. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Rafaela is writing ordinary man. Uh, oh. I, I, I wrote, Christopher yes, Browning yes. to arrive. Yeah, I wrote. I wrote. Uh, yes, he was a specialist in his in this bad work. Um, he looks on the one hand on the on the one hand uh, like an ordinary man. But I would say, on the other hand, not because he doesn't look to the audience during this uh, trial, yeah, which made yeah, make him very special. But I agree with with the other uh, person. Um, he looked, of course, like an like an ordinary man. Um, okay. One um, more example, and then we'll continue. Uh, Grid Reft is writing. Even if I couldn't read it all, it is always helpful to engage people into the discussion about happening again, where. Is it possible which form this helps people to think about the current situation? Okay, Great. so thank you very much, Maximilian, and thank for all of you that uh, took part. It, it was just a short example of engagement during a Zoom, but uh, it, it's possible, meaning to create a, a dialogue. By the way, I think, uh, uh, to my opinion, uh, not always, but sometimes I, I would open all of the microphones. I would uh, unmute uh, everyone and speak your mind out. To me, it makes it, again, I can see you, I can hear you. Uh, I don't want you only to click. We can, uh, sometimes I, in the Zoom, I, I even engage in, in uh, arguments bec uh, between uh, uh, students, you know, ordinary man, psychopath, and these discussions, uh, make this so relevant uh, to the lives that uh, when they think about it, I see sometimes in their eyes when at the end of this discussion that uh, they feel uh, uncomfortable. And to us, when I see that look that I'm feeling a little bit uncomfortable, well, that means that I can get my salary. Uh, so uh, Maximilian, I have one more example, but I'm out of time. So uh, I can I can finish right here. Uh, 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 you're, you're the host. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you can you can use the time. We we have we have uh, still enough time. So okay, great. Time. no problem. Uh, just a second. Um, okay. So uh, the second one um, takes us to the Warsaw ghetto. There, uh, again, we'll have subtitles. Again, uh, you won't be able to see it uh, great because it is what it is. And uh, uh, we should do a better job in, in terms of uh, subtitles. Uh, they're not amazing. Um, we took the Warsaw Ghetto and we divided it into three years. 1940, the beginning of uh, the Warsaw Ghetto, 1941, uh, and 1942, which is basically the end of the ghetto in the summer of 1942, when most of the ghetto uh, out of uh, almost half a million are sent to Treblinka uh, during the summer and the fall of 1942. And then there are only 60,000 left in the ghetto. And from there, we'll begin uh, the uprising in January and April 1943. So. I want to show you an example of one year uh, in the ghetto. Again, it's uh, it's ten minutes. I took two minutes uh, from those uh, ten minutes. That shows different uh, people uh, in the ghetto that lived uh, during that uh, during that period. Uh, we took actors. Now, uh, I want to say something about that because uh, uh, many colleagues visit us from all over the world also from Jerusalem. 
Uh, some of the some of them like uh, this idea. Some of them hate <laughs> this idea. And again, that's great if you like it or hate it. Uh, we thought that uh, approaching the young generation with the uh, younger actors uh, can make this more approachable uh, to them in terms of uh, not only looking at uh, Holocaust survivors um, uh, when they are old. In Israel, it's also very difficult because many of the Holocaust survivors, uh, they have this very Polish accent. And for the young generation in Israel, uh, for them to listen to them, it's almost not like a different language. Uh, it doesn't mean that we don't uh, need to show this. We do. We do it all the time. But going back to the beginning, uh, asking about what should we do uh, in times when uh, the Holocaust survivors are leaving us? You know, today, even those Holocaust survivors that live in Israel are almost in their 90s. They can't meet teenagers today because of COVID-19. And uh, some of them, even if we didn't have COVID-19, lots of them are already very ill. And sadly, some or lots of them already uh, uh, lack memory. Uh, so uh, bringing those actors, but we, those actors, uh, their dialogue, their monologue are uh, historical, meaning everything they say w was said during the time of the ghetto in diaries, letters, and so on. So let's see uh, the first year of the ghetto, 1940. ביום הכיפורים. התאספנו בג'לנה לכינוס התנועה, נכנסה פרומקה וידיעה מרישה בפיה. היום הודיעו על הקמת הגטו בוורשה. הכינוס נזדעזע. ידענו בדיוק מה כוונתם של הגרמנים. לדחוק את היהודים לתוך כלא מסוגר ולהריבם, אגב שלילת האפשרויות האחרונות, המעטות לעבודה, לקיום. עיקר הפעילות הייתה עזרה לפליטים ולמחוסרי גג שהגיעו, וחלוקה של בגדים וארוחות לרעבים. ולאורך זמן ארוך למדי, הפעילות הפוליטית שותקה, והמאמצים הופנו לפסים של פעולת צעד, שהייתה לא רק העשייה העיקרית, אלא גם היחידה. בגלל הבידוד המוחלט של הגטו והאיסור על הכנסת עיתונות מבחוץ, כל מה שאירע מחוץ לחומות הגטו נעשה יותר ויותר מעורפל, מרוחק וסער. באותם ימים פרסמנו שישה פרסומים. ההוצאה לאור של העיתונות התבצעה בתנאים קשים מאוד. במכונת שכפול ישנה אחת, על פי רוב ללא אור חשמל, היה כמעט בלתי אפשרי להמשיך לעבוד. מאידך, כל דקה הייתה יקרה. בשבע בבוקר, העיתון, ולא חשוב כמה עמודים, היה חייב להיות מוכן לחלוקה. תחילה חשבנו להקים גימנסיה רק לחברי התנועה, וביקשנו להקנות להם ידיעות במקצועות כלליים ובלימודי היהדות. אולם במרוצת הימים, נתרחבה המסגרת והגענו עד 120 תלמידים. להמשיך ללמוד לא רק היה דחף פנימי, הלמידה הייתה גם חלק מהמאבק שלנו נגד הכיבוש. אחד המורים שלנו היה המשורר יצחק כצנלסון, הוא לימד תנ״ך. השיעורים שלו מתוך ספרי הנביאים יחזקאל, ישעיהו ועמוס, הטבעו בי חותם לכל החיים. אוקיי, אז מה שרציתי להראות בחלק של האקסיביציה, זה, ראשית, מה קרה היסטורית, אבל, בצד השני, how the Jews were uh, active during that time in the ghetto. They create schools, they create synagogues, they, uh, they establish means of uh, dividing uh, food uh, in the ghetto and medicine and hospitals and so on and so on and so on. To many of our visitors, that's a big surprise because when they think about Jews in the ghetto, they think of them very passive. They're victims. Something is happening to them. But looking at them and seeing them also as active during that period, that's a big surprise. 
And that takes us to the part of trying to inspire to activism during that period, and maybe thinking about what activism means today for them uh, as a, a young generation. So I'll stop sharing uh, now. I stole a lot of time. Um, and I can leave, I leave uh, uh, if there's time for questions or, or anything, I'll be more than happy to answer. Yeah, there's of course uh, time for questions. Uh, thank you very much for this inspiring uh, presentation and especially uh, for this last video. Um, for me, it was, it was the first time to see uh, this way of, of uh, um, see our survivors uh, quote. Um, because I never saw it, uh, because it was like a, like a mixture. Yeah? You, you have these uh, original pictures, you have these profile pictures from the survivor, and then you have an, an actor who's um, looking like the, the survivor and, 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 and telling their, their history. Uh, quite interesting. And I think there are a lot of, uh, uh, there, there are some questions about it or meanings. Um, I have one, um, uh, Jaron, what do you think about these uh, 3D animations? Um, these, uh, maybe you, you've heard about that. Holocaust survivors? Because, um, yeah, yeah, because in, in Dachau um, uh, two weeks ago, um, we, we made a test in our cinema. And because um, we have, there's one famous survivor here in Dachau, his name is Abba Naor. Maybe you also know him. I think he's also a bit famous in, in Israel. And yeah, I don't. I do not understand better. Um, but um, um, uh, he made, he, 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 they, they made a lot of interviews with him. And now there is this uh, 3D animation of him. And you can uh, ask uh, uh, a question to this animation or to this hologram, and then the this uh, program will answer uh, to you. Yeah. Uh, what do you say? Think about this way of 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 um, participating with a with a survivor after the person is, is there. Well, if the head of our archives in, from our museum would listen to me now to what I'm going to say, uh, she would shoot me. Uh, no. Maybe, I don't know. Um, I think we need to find uh, innovative ways to engage uh, with young society. I think we need to be bold, but not too popular in terms of uh, you know just wanting to engage and everything is open, okay? I think that uh, uh, many people asked me in Israel, what do I think about the uh, Eva story? Okay, in the, in the Instagram two years ago. Yeah. Now, the people who asked me this question, everybody know, here knows this, right? Uh, the people who asked me were teenagers. That, that, was, that was the first time they learned about the Holocaust in Instagram. Okay, to me, it was shocking. I, I was shocked. But it was a fact. Many of them learned uh, uh, Holocaust. Uh, from a young uh, diary of a girl in Hungary, uh, which is not even a diary, it's a story in Instagram. It, it's reduced from a diary to a story. And uh, is that okay? I, I don't know. We were approached a month ago by uh, a game developer <laughs> from uh, PlayStation and Xbox. <laughs> he wanted to, to create a game with us, a video game. And my first reaction before I met him that, is he crazy? I, I'm, not gonna, I, I'm not gonna meet him, you know? But then we met, nothing happened, okay? But uh, don't be afraid, there's no video game coming uh, soon. Yeah. But I asked myself after the meeting, uh, is that legitimate? Should we be talking about things like uh, video games? By the way, I saw, I saw that uh, the new uh, Oculus VR, uh, it's, it's a new uh, VR, uh, mm -hmm. uh, has, uh, has uh, is some sort of uh, Anne Frank experience in VR. Uh, I'm curious. So if you ask me about 3D, I think that we, first of all, we need to be um, ethical towards history, meaning not to create new fake news or fake history. Uh, but in terms of methods, I think we need to be uh, open uh, because many of the, uh, you know, Yad Vashem visitors uh, from, the, from management, when they saw these actors that you saw before, they say, wait, don't do that. Or 
if they see or if people see, you know. So I think in, in that matter that we need to have an open discussion as museums, mm -hmm. as for example, what I did here before, this is, an ex this is a part of an exhibition. Did you see this as an exhibition? Is it an exhibition? Can I show a video film as an exhibition in, in the 21st century? It's a question. But I think we need to engage in dialogue and discussion yeah. and argument. We need to argue about these matters and not just say, well, that's the borderlines. We shouldn't be even speaking about creating 3D Holocaust survivors. Mm -hmm. I don't have an answer, to, uh, but I know that here in Israel, we're speaking about these things too, about what's legitimate and, or should we be talking uh, about these things at all? Mm -hmm. I, 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 you because um, I think there are always these discussions when you do something with, with new uh, ways of, of media. I mean, the, the one one month ago there was this uh, discussion about these uh, TikTok uh, videos. Maybe you heard about that. About uh, the young girls uh, yeah, acting young girls, as, uh, doing uh, TikTok videos and they're acting like uh, like a little child and doing the Holocaust. And there was also this discussion. Uh, discussion: uh, Can you do it or not? Is it uh, is it okay? What, what did you think? Yeah, it's, it's, it's difficult. For, 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 yeah, for, uh, when I saw that the first time I said, oh my God, what they are doing. I mean, um, uh, should they do it really like this? On the other hand, I would say, I mean, um, I would say 30 or 40 years ago, there were, there were these discussions about, about a Holocaust inside of a movie. And um, it was also new for the people. I mean, and this is, this is now a way maybe young, the young people are, uh, are talking about that. And, and, uh, um, for, for this fact, this is okay. Other, on the other hand, um, it depends. I mean, I saw some of these uh, TikTok videos. Uh, they were okay for me because um, there were a lot of information inside of it, and um, I saw that the people made a little, the, the, the young children made a little uh, research, and then it's okay. But if it's only to uh, to uh, make your uh, um, TikTok channel more popular, then I would say it's not okay. Yeah, uh -huh, I, I agree but, with but you. you. Have, I always have to say it from 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 both uh, sides. Yeah. Yeah, but it's a, it's an interesting discussion for the for for us now and also for the future. Yeah. Uh, Stefan asked me uh, about uh, difficulties teaching uh, yes. uh, young people uh, in the Eichmann exhibition uh, when they're going to the army. Not two months later, but let's say two years later. Um, in Israel, going to the army is mandatory uh, for most of the people now. When they hear what Eichmann has to say for himself and his uh, defense lawyer, uh, Zervatius, uh, I was only following orders, it wasn't my fault, uh, I was an officer with uniform, and so on and so on, uh, I see uh, young people shocked by the things that he says because many soldiers I'm not talking in Israel, I'm all over the world, you know, uh, <laughs> in Hague, okay, in Holland. Uh, after a war crime occurs, they say, yeah, I was just following orders. It didn't start in the Holocaust and it didn't end in the Holocaust going uh, after genocide or war crimes or crimes against humanity and say, yeah, and you know, I was just, uh, I was just, an, uh, just a soldier. For people that, for them, it's mandatory to go to the army. This is a shocking uh, thing, uh, thing to hear because uh, what do they think about uh, his line of defense? Uh, I can see uh, sometimes in their eyes say, yeah, well, that's not a bad defense, uh, what he's saying right at the moment. So it's, it's, it's a wonderful discussion. It's, it's, it's so important. It doesn't matter if you're going or not going to the army. But uh, what does it mean to be on uniform? Mm -hmm. And uh, how far uh, do people go in, in that matter? Yeah. yeah. I think also it's important to um, do also uh, workshops or tools like this or discussions like this with people from the army. We also do, do, do this in, in Dachau. Um, there, are, there are a few more questions. Um, there's one from uh, Virginia. Um, she's writing, we are also dealing with the question of survivors. And um, so for my children of uh, La Maison des Aisieux and how to uh, uh, perpetuate their memory uh, words after they will die. 
we have created a workshop about this topic and it could be great to speak about it together so maybe it's uh, it's um, a question about the um, cooperate cooperation maybe yeah so um, maybe virginia and then marie um, after, um, in the future you can maybe um, do another Love workshop to. together with Yaron and more detailed about it that would be a good idea yeah you are very interested about the first point you said about the like uh, the individual responsibility uh, because we are working on Shoah and other crime against humanity and the international court and uh, you've got um, a point which is the individual responsibility and we're working with uh, mostly with the uh, uh, low students uh, on this point because lots of uh, criminals like uh, in uh, Yugoslavia, they said, uh, I didn't give the order or uh, I was given the, given the order and I just uh, made uh, what they asked me to. And this point is really interesting because uh, uh, even if you, you, you don't say kill them, you're part of it. And if uh, you kill them because someone told you to, you are responsible, responsible, and it's very interesting. We also have a, um, so sorry, because, uh, I'm I'm thinking while I'm speaking because what said Yaron, uh, it uh, made me thought about um, uh, it. We've got um, uh, a part of the exhibition called uh, "How Was It Possible," and uh, from the um, the interdiction, the forbidden. Uh, to kill until the mass murder as a routine. And how do you end with it? Uh, how do you begin with it? And how do you end with it? So it's uh, really interesting. And about the question of the survivors, we try to, because we have survivors, not uh, children deported from ISU, but uh, other children who, ca who came to ISU and uh, left ISU before the, the roundup. And they are committed and they're really, really committed. They are uh, testifying uh, in front of your children and uh, adults, and, uh, but they're very old. And how to, and the, uh, what you said also, Maxine was interested because um, uh, how to, to made, how to make the world alive, even if they are dead, but without um uh, stalling it i don't know do, do you understand what i say yes yes without um um you know uh, how to per perpetuate the the words and what they want to say and uh, also we've got a question which is very important is uh, uh, after the war what did they do after the war how, how did they uh, survive after without uh, family and parents uh, we are dealing with it, it's, it's uh, interesting. And also the last thing about um, how, to, how to deal with um, the, the question of the mass murders. And uh, we saw, we spoke about it with Marie and the other, with Alexandre, as you, you spoke with him with, uh, by email. Yeah. Uh, in uh, Babilla, I think it was uh, last year, and they made uh, um, guide, some kind of guided tour and it was like uh, when you enter the museum, you are an Einsatzgruppen or a Jew. And you have, you've got to play the roles. And for them, it was totally normal because it was uh, uh, the, the visitors were committed in their, in their tour. And, uh, but for us, for example, it was very shocking. So I, I, I want to know what do you think about that? Uh, how how we can how far you can go, <laughs> because it's not uh, and the, the problem with our uh, memorial is, is that uh, we are not a uh, uh, entertainment memorial. We are not entertainment museum. Like um, and so uh, it's uh, very difficult to find. Um, you know, yes, how far, how far you can go. For me, yeah. it was too far, <laughs> but uh, yeah. for for Marie and Alexandre too. Man. I, I also visited uh, um, uh, Kiev uh, three years ago, and uh, I also went to Babinia, and I was also shocked there. And when I had these discussions about uh, this fact you you mentioned, um, and um, yeah, it's, I mean it's it's, it's inspiring to see uh, how uh, the museum uh, in Israel, Yaron's uh, museum, is working uh, with with new media and so on. Yeah. I mean, uh, in 
we are in Dachau, we are not uh, so, so modern in, in this fact. Uh, I mean, I mentioned this 3D animation, but it was only a uh, we only it was only a test in our cinema. So maybe in the future we will do it like this. Um, but for me, it was important um, to to see that the uh, that the survivors like Abana Or that they also agree with it. They they say okay for us it's very good. I mean we 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 uh, we, uh, we they, they, they said to us. Uh, we like the fact that we know, okay, also in the future, in 10 or 20 years, um, people can ask their questions. And this was uh, something something good, I would say. Yeah. Um, yeah, but, but um, co corporations are the big thing. I mean, also in the next years, um, we can, we, we should talk about, uh, about new media and, and um, uh, change our ideas here. But yeah, there. Uh, thank you very much um, for it. And there are some more questions. There's a very long one from Irina Grinkevich. Uh, she's writing. I love the point you made about teaching positive behavior on example of a very dark period of human history. What I ask myself now if whether it is possible without a very good um, preparation, um, uh, without a very good preparation. In my mind, it is something which requires a good background no knowledge of the group. I imagine it can be easier in Israel because people uh, there start learning about Shoah at a very early age. But that uh, what concerns other countries. Can you uh, comment on how uh, correct my assumption is from your point of view? And later she wrote again, I, I specific, uh, specify my question. I mean in, it in uh, reference to the formats offered and described here. Um. So is it easier in Israel um, um, to 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 uh, ask this question for younger people because they learned more about the Holocaust in school? No, actually they don't. Uh, it's a stereotype. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, uh, they know little about World War II. They don't know too much about uh, about the Holocaust and with the uh, new ways of uh, tests today in the 11th and 12th grade, uh, it even makes it a little bit more shallow. They don't, have, uh, they don't have a lot of time to learn about it. So they learn it, you know, uh, a couple of lessons about ghetto, a couple of lessons about this and about that. Uh, so no, it doesn't start earlier and it doesn't go deeper. Uh, with my... Uh, and meeting um, German educators and students, uh, uh, I think that <laughs> Germans know uh, more historically uh, than uh, Israelis. Uh, I think that even the United States do. Um, today, there's even in terms of uh, learning the Holocaust, there there's even a difference in Israel between the different ethnic groups in Israel. Uh, Jews that uh, came from countries from, let's say, uh, North Africa, okay, uh, Libya, Morocco, and so on, or Jews that their ancestors came from Europe, you can see that there are different, uh, different approaches, sometimes even uh, antagonistic uh, towards, uh, towards this topic. Um, so I, I don't know uh, how much uh, there's a difference today between Israel and other countries. It is uh, every um, teenager until he ends high school will visit one or two uh, Holocaust museums. Uh, so maybe that's a little bit of a difference. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. Um, but in terms of uh, in terms of uh, teaching, also uh, goodness, uh, that's something that I think we need to think about. Uh, the way we approach the Holocaust, going only to the dark side of the moon, uh, I think that we need also to put our minds into people that during the Holocaust that made different choices that can inspire young people to look at humanity, not from only the point of view that everybody can be a murderer, but also that can every, everybody can also save, everybody can also protest, everybody, and so on and so on. So I think it's not about creating, uh, you know, a, a two-pointer, but it's also 
it, it really inspires uh, in my point of view. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for this. Thank you. Work. And yeah, there's uh, one uh, last question um, before we go to the breakout rooms. Um, it's from Patricia Pireto Soto. It's very long, but um, um, first she's writing yeah, that she is uh, inspired by your presentation and the, the movie you shot and the way you, you, you're doing it or you're teaching it. And, but then the question is, um, I personally miss uh, this connection to the, also yeah, do, doing a live tour, for example, I personally miss this connection to the visitors who can ask questions when watching an online guided tour, but whose faces and reactions we cannot see. Does anybody have more ideas how to build bridges between guides and visitors when working online? So it's a question to everyone. <laughs> so a wonderful question. Wonderful, yeah, yeah. wonderful question. Yeah. So who likes to talk about that? Maybe some of, of our speakers, Mofi Dolhokwe, Virginia, or also also the audience can 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 ask. I can 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 uh, yeah uh, say something about it yeah. That's exactly the same for us because like uh, we we had one workshop the secondary class but it was more of a virtual tour and uh, all of our workshop here in Mizu they are very interactive so uh, we don't give a speech uh, the the children or the student they need to to learn by themselves it's very important for us. So in this time of, um, of crisis, uh, it's very frustrating because we, we, we need to have, it was the question that I, uh, the, the same, I, I've got the same question. So you have pedagogical tools, uh, um, for example, for the using of archives, uh, the technical tools, the platforms you use, yeah, yeah, is uh, Zoom really working for a workshop and uh, so, I've got also the, the same question, so uh, please, Yaron, Mofidul, please. Well, uh, for us, we are now going to move into the virtual tour of the museum. But last year, we had in our museum during the film festival, we have a VR film of a all of the survivor, which was given to us by the Shoah Foundation. And we found that actually younger people are very much uh, um, get engaged with the new technology, new ideas. And I think now we have to think about it that uh, technology itself is neutral, but how you use the uh, techniques. And we, we feel very strongly that we have to move into this area with all the options that is there. And we are from the older generation, from an analog period, but we feel very strongly that uh, technology should be the vehicle for bringing memory to the new generation. This is we strongly feel and we want to learn. Mm -hmm. oh. Thank you. Uh, I mean, and, um, as I always uh, already said in the beginning, um, we are now offering these uh, guided live tours uh, online for schools and uh, the, the, the students in the school, they can ask their questions directly to the guide. So there's a kind of cooperation, but I, but I agree uh, uh, to this point that uh, it is not easy for the guide because the guide cannot see all the students. And this is something what we also uh, miss, are missing. Uh, so uh, we should work um, uh, for a way to, to make this, this better, yeah. Yeah, it is Bowman, uh, uh, she like to, add something once yeah no yeah um i thought it would be good to just talk and not type <laughs> yes. um yeah so i work at bergen Bos memorial um in germany and we've done some instagram live tours and something that i um, have learned from my experience is that sometimes you just have to be silent and leave some time because i think very often when you try to be interactive and you ask a question and there's not an immediate response which is of course logical because people need some time to first take in the question, then come up with an answer and then type it. Um, and it's time that usually when you do like an analog tour, you know, just be waiting for the people to, to say something. And in online environments, you're like, well, there's no questions, I'll just continue. <laughs> um, so I think we should try to, to um, become more comfortable with silence as well. Um, 
and yeah it's 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 sometimes very kind of uncomfortable and weird and and you don't really know um how to deal with it but i think it's something that um that we should just um yeah take into account to just um yeah have some room for for thought and for silence in online environments as well that's mm-hmm. just something that i um experienced in the past few weeks and months mm-hmm. yeah this is a good point um um yeah because uh, <laughs> Sometimes uh, there's silence. Sometimes there's no uh, no discussion uh, with with the guide and the the people who are watching it online. Yeah, um, um, yeah. So we also should to think about that. Yeah. I think maybe just one more sentence uh, because I really like what uh, Tessa said. I, that it also uh, really important what what we ask and how we ask it, meaning sometimes uh, young people see that uh, when the question is a real question or a fake question. Sometimes you ask a question because that's what you do, but you're not really interested uh, in the answer. Sometimes the question is just a yes and no answer. And sometimes the question you already, the guide already knows the answer, so then we're not really engaging in a true dialogue because to engage is to be a little bit out of control because it's not only you controlling the discussion, but something is happening and it's not all in your control. So asking good questions, that's that that's a kind of art, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, thank you also for Tisa Bowman um, to uh, to add this uh, question. And yeah, now it's uh, ten past five, and uh, we are continue with our last step with uh, um, breakout rooms. And um, my uh, colleague Caroline Wirth, she will uh, create now um, five breakout rooms, and in each breakout room there will be five participants from all of us. And then in the breakout room, we have, uh, I would say, yeah, 15 more minutes. Is it okay to uh, discuss in smaller groups? And um, I will add now two uh, questions. One second. I put it in the, uh, in the chat. So the first question uh, for you for the discussion in the smaller groups in the breakout room is what can we what can we learn from the experience of the last six months so um, of the um, the experiment experiments um, during the corona crisis which forms of digital education have been especially useful for a moral sites so I would say we go on with the discussion we all we already had here but I think it's better to do it also in smaller groups. And I saw there was also one question by Frank uh, Krohn either to me, uh, uh, to Franz Krohn's either to me. Um, Franz, maybe you also can take your question to your uh, breakout room and discuss it there. Yeah, that would be nice. So um, I would say we see us again back in 15 minutes. Um, if you have any problems in the breakout room, uh, you also can write something in the chat and uh, Carolina can try to help you. Um, yeah, is it okay for everyone, or do we have questions for it? No. So he will take us to the breakout room. Uh, hmm? Again, sorry. Uh, how you will divide the group? Who will take us to the breakout room? Uh, a, a colleague of mine, to... Carolina. She will. She create now the breakout rooms, and then okay. yeah, um, we go together uh, into the rooms, um, but yeah, randomly, so you don't know uh, the persons. Uh, yet, which are with you in the breakout room. Okay, Carolina, can we go on? Think a few seconds. I think we were 31 before the breakout rooms. Oh, okay. (laughs) (laughs) So maybe some people already left yeah but it's uh, um it's already very very late but um yeah i hope um you had good discussions i mean may- maybe the time was was too short i think um in my group we had a good discussion um mufidol uh, told us something very interesting about uh, the last commemoration in in, uh, in bangladesh because uh, there there was uh, a, a very traditional 
music band and there was also a heavy metal band and this was something new for me because I never heard about a new or modern music at a commemoration and maybe Mofidol you can you can share the the link into the into the chat um, that we can uh, uh, see a video about it it might be interesting <laughs> yeah and then we also talked about um, yeah at this about the same uh, um, topic we talked uh, already before Uh, of, of a new race of of of, uh, of doing uh, guided tours and about TikTok and Instagram and so on. And I said that in our memorial site, um, the head of our memorial site, Gabriela Hammermann, said before the uh, coronavirus, uh, we should not go to Facebook or Instagram or YouTube. We don't need this. And after the crisis began, uh, she changed her mind. So uh, uh, it was also a chance to do uh, to go new race. So, um, ah, okay, Patricia Pietro Soto uh, wrote uh, that uh, the only similar idea I can think about here in Europe is Ista Bechanaro and the Microphone Mafia. Yeah, um, uh, this is a good do example. Ex um, do explain. Yeah, maybe Patricia, do you want to explain it? Otherwise, I can also do it. You can do it, Max. <laughs> What? You can do, you can explain okay. it yourself. Yeah, it's it's it's, uh, it's quite quite funny and good for me. Um, I, I, w I went once to a concert of her. Um, Ista Bechanaro survived uh, uh, Auschwitz. Um, she is now in an age of I think 93 or 94, so she's very old, but uh, she's still uh, very good in, in mind and still very powerful. And her her grandson, uh, he is a, a rapper, so he, he's doing hip hop. And so Esther Bechanaro, uh, uh, she is, she's like a rap singer or a singer, and she's uh, she's doing uh, some concerts together with with her with her son and the band called Microphone Mafia, and she is doing music against racism in Germany, against anti-Semitism and so on. And uh, yes, quite often she's going to schools, and um, I think this is a for me a good idea to uh, to uh, work or fight against. Uh, uh, racism in, in, in Germany. We definitely need a video clip. Yes. Um, maybe Patricia, definitely, can you... Can definitely. you uh, uh, Because uh, if I will explain later on, no one will believe me. Yeah. <laughs> maybe Patricia, can you share something? That would be nice. Yeah. Um, so maybe some of the other persons uh, or, or the, of the participants would add, add something from the breakout rooms. I think you all. Uh, I, I can I can yep. say something. Um, so nice. um, we talked a lot about about the question of time, like how to, like um, I think it's it's similar in analog and digital formats that you always feel like you don't have enough time to, um, to cover everything that you want to cover, and especially, um, um, talking about we we also talked about this question of um, um sharing not only like the, the evil and the bad um, stories, but also like this, these stories of, of goodness and of humanity and how um, um, for this, you really need time to kind of um, focus on both, both sides. Um, and then we also talked about this um, like flipped um, classroom method so that before doing an online um, discussion, you would um, already send out some, some materials to you, the group you're going to work, going to be working with. So you can really use the, uh, the time that you're spending with them online with discussion. Um, and I think um, these are things that we're all um, starting to get more experience with and we're still kind of at the beginning um, um, uh, with that. And I hope um, in the next few months we'll, we'll have some more experience and um, some more um, insights on, on how this can, can work. Um, yeah, that's, that's basically what we, what we spoke about. Cool. Yeah, thank you very much. Sounds good. And yeah, I think it's 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 interesting for us to see uh, how we how all of us uh, will talk about this topic maybe in one year because um, actually um, I think that this uh, crisis uh, go on quite long. Maybe in one year we have still uh, similar problems. And but yeah, maybe um, after one more year we do, we do develop uh, some more stuff. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it's it's half past uh, five already and um, two and a half hours are behind us but uh, I think it, uh, it was very good um, and thank you very much uh, for Mofi Dolo Hockery 
um, for uh, for the first presentation. It was uh, quite amazing um, to, to see uh, what you are doing or what you did already in the, in the last years, um, especially also with, with young people or with your commemoration and so on. Very inspiring. Um, thank you uh, also for for to Virginia and and Marie for your work and also for the um, uh, movie you did uh, during uh, uh, COVID-19. And um, yeah, um, um, also uh, thank you very much uh, to, to Jaron. Um, uh, it's very inspiring as well, um, especially that uh, the point you said that you teach the, good, the goodness and, and, and that it was also a great uh, task uh, uh, you made with us with, with the video of, of Eichmann. And uh, yeah, it was, I think, inspiring for, for all of us. It was great to have a discussion. Uh, we discussed a lot uh, about, um, about new ways of, of uh, of education and yeah i think um it's enough for today um i think we will go on with this uh, kind of workshop we will make another workshop maybe in three months with um, some uh, maybe with three or four more guests um but i invite of course uh, all of you for our next workshop also uh, our, our speakers because it's always interesting uh, to discuss and and see what you uh, develop after three or six more months so maybe Jaron, Mufidol, or Virginia, Marie, do you want to add something in the end? I would love to follow up. Yeah. Half a year from now, let's see where 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 we are and where where we're going. Uh, it's really you know because of the COVID, we're all the time here in Israel, but I'm sure that in all the countries it's like that. You, we're in ourselves, in our own shells, and you know, it's uh, most of the time you you don't see a lot of people, you don't speak a lot, and uh, to me, it was really inspiring to meet uh, to meet all of you and to listen, and uh, it was it was really good. I'm uh, personally really good. Yeah, thank you. Very inspiring for us, and uh, I found that COVID nineteen has all brought us together. And I think that's the great thing that even in the disaster, you see strikes of hope and new beginning. So I, we want to be keep in touch with all of you and make a journey together. Yeah. Thank you for bringing me in. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yes, thank you very much. And uh, for us too, we, uh, we are hoping, as I said in the breakdown room, I hope we can uh, work together, continue to work together, and uh, the good point of the, of the COVID is the, the interaction between museums all over the world and to share our experience is very interesting. So thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. And it's good that uh, every one of you um, shared your, the, the, the email address in the chat so um, if there's anyone uh, from anybody from the uh, uh, from the audience who have maybe tomorrow or in one week another question i think it's okay when they are writing to you an email here yeah? um and yeah i think we will go on um of course um it would be nice to have all of you uh, in in our next workshop and uh, now i see Jaron, uh, that there is already the link uh, for the video of Esta Bejanaro. can you see it I already watched it. <laughs> oh, okay. That's nice. Okay, yeah. So um, thank you very much again. And um, yeah, maybe Mufidol, Virginia, and um, um, Marie and Yara, maybe you can stay uh, uh, for some minutes. And yeah, um, for the for the audience, I would say uh, um, thank you very much um, for for participating, for listening, for your time. And yeah, have a nice evening. And yeah. You should stay healthy, of course, yeah, because uh, not so easy times are coming now, yeah. But thank you very much and have a nice evening, yeah. Bye. So, Caroline, du kannst dann, glaube ich, die Aufzeichnung anhalten.